Good morning, everybody, and I've got some important news for you, and you better pay attention because, look, I was doing some research recently, and it turns out that language learning is, well, it's too hard. It's too complicated. In fact, you won't believe some of the stuff that I've dug up here, right? And if you actually pay attention to all these warnings, I think you would agree that it's all so hard that you really just better not bother. Are you ready for this? Hit the like button on this video if you're ready while I compose myself because this stuff is unbelievable. I mean, where do we start? Let's start with Italian. Italian. Who would have thought that Italian was hard? You see, I just discovered that there isn't just one kind of Italian. Oh no. It turns out that in Italy, in fact, there are 34 kinds of Italian. They speak a bit differently in every part of the country, and sometimes even Italians themselves don't understand each other if they're from a different part of the country. And it's the same country. Can you believe it? So if you want to learn Italian, you actually have to learn 34 different languages. I bet you're glad I warned you. Now you can spare yourself the trouble. Honestly, I think Spanish is probably easier. But then, I've heard that Spanish is also really tough. I mean, let's say you go, let's say you like to go on holiday to Costa Rica. So you want to learn Costa Rican Spanish. Well, if you go to any big language bookshop, you'll find tons of textbooks to learn Spanish from Spain. But wait, in, Sp in Spain, you see, they use vosotros to say you when you're talking to groups of people, which you never use in Costa Rica. So, you can just forget about using those textbooks. If any textbook uses vosotros, you should just chuck it out immediately. Now, you might find a Mexican Spanish textbook, but before you get your hopes up, it's no good. Because in Mexico, when you're saying you, singular, you say tú. Whereas I heard that in Costa Rica, they use vos, a totally different word. So you see, you're gonna learn wrong Spanish if you learn from those textbooks, straight in the bin. You will never, ever learn Costa Rican Spanish. Quite honestly, if anyone tells you that you can learn a new language, they're just lying to you. It's all a conspiracy. And it's not just Spanish or Italian. A friend of mine married a Chinese girl and he wanted to learn Chinese. Now he was quite keen. After all, learning Chinese would have been quite useful when he visited China to meet his family. But then, as he was researching the language, he saw on Wikipedia, right? On Wikipedia, there was this one Chinese character, and get this, you won't believe this, one Chinese character which has 58 strokes. Can you believe it? 58 strokes. You use this character, apparently, to write the name of a special kind of noodle. A noodle! In English, it's just six letters. In Chinese, it's 58 strokes for one word. My friend, right, he tried writing this character once, just for fun. And then he sent me a picture on his phone of what he wrote. It looked more like spaghetti than a noodle, and he said it took him half an hour to write. So I just told him to give up learning Chinese right away. I mean, how can you learn Chinese if it takes you half an hour to write one word? Forget it. Chinese was not for him. Oh, and, and don't even get me started about a language like German. German, three different word genders, three different cases. Take my advice and spare yourself the trouble. Listen, if you are looking for an excuse to give up on a new language, to throw in the towel and pack it all in, you will find it. Of that, ladies and gentlemen, you can be sure. From dialects to pronouns, cases to characters, there are a lot of reasons why the language that you're learning right now is far too hard and why you should cut your losses and quit right now before it gets any worse. The examples I've given you here are some of the classics, some of the excuses that I read on forums, uh, in my inbox, dare I say it, even in YouTube comments. But at times like this, it's good to remind yourself of the famous quote, I am an old man and have known a great many troubles, most of which never happened. And there is no better quote on the planet to describe these language urban legends, which quite frankly are more useful as dinner party trivia than as objective comments about actually learning the language. Yes, it may be true that there are tons of local dialects in Italy, 
but it's also true that everyone can speak to you in standard Italian, so it doesn't really matter. Yes, it may be true that there are a few different words for you in Spanish, depending on the country that you go to, but it's also true that 99% of everything in Spanish is pretty much exactly the same wherever you go. So dismissing entire textbooks or courses because they use vosotros is simply a bad decision. In fact, I have a special training program for intermediate Spanish learners. It's called the Fluent Spanish Academy. And in the Fluent Spanish Academy, I actually deliberately give you material and listening training from different parts of the Spanish speaking world where they speak a bit differently in order to prove the point that you can understand and learn from different varieties of Spanish. I want to immunize you against thinking that you can't learn uh, from a certain kind of Spanish because it's a little bit different. In fact, if anything, as a learner, it makes you stronger. And if you're learning Spanish, you should definitely check out what we do in the Fluent Spanish Academy because you will love it. Moving on, it may be true that there are Chinese characters with 58 strokes, but it's also true that you'll never ever have to write that character with 58 strokes. Yes, it may be true that German has a few cases to wrap your head around, and yes, those cases are downright weird if you're new to German. But it's also true that you could learn cases in a very natural way, gradually, without having to drive yourself crazy with rules, using methods like how we teach in our German Uncovered program. Whatever example you give me about something that is really hard in language learning, I can show you why your example may be interesting and great to impress your friends at dinner parties, but completely irrelevant to the important question of what can you do right now to make progress in your language learning. See, without a doubt, there are a lot of very useful things that you can be doing right now in your target language to drive your progress forward and your level up without worrying about difficult things that may or may not crop up in the future. And most importantly of all, things that seem hard now might not seem quite so hard in the future. So worrying about difficult stuff in advance is really not a very smart move. So do yourself a favor and don't worry about language problems until they're actually biting you in the behind. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it and you'd like me to continue this series of the rules of language learning, then you can let me know by liking this video. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos every week, then you can subscribe to the channel using the big red button below and the videos will pop right up in your news feed.